assembly begins a session that will reshape the government. The post of prime minister is to return. After a marathon session, Argentina's lower house passes the new government's bill to reboot the economy and redistribute wealth. And Ethiopia becomes the 11th African country to launch its own satellite into space with aid from China. Hello and welcome to Telesur English. I am Stefania Bravo. This is From the South. Cuba is beginning to introduce its new government structure, including the return of the post of prime minister. The National Assembly of Popular Power is beginning a two-day session that is expected to adopt important measures to improve economic planning. On Saturday, it will name the new prime minister alongside other ministers. The new form of government was part of Cuba's new constitution, approved in a referendum last February. Our correspondent in Havana, Nayara Tardo, is at the Parliament. The fourth period of the National Assembly of Popular Power has now opened here in Havana to put into effect the new aspects of the Constitution. The session has begun with an analysis of Cuba's economic performance this year and the forecast for next year. They are also looking at the budget for next year and reorganizing the Assembly's various committees. They are expected to adopt laws dealing with these two aspects, and a third on the new structure of local assemblies. One of the most important moments of this session will be the election tomorrow of a prime minister, as decided in the new constitution. This post was abolished in the constitution of 1976, but the constitution adopted last February reintroduces the post. President Miguel Díaz-Canel will propose a name for prime minister, and the assembly will then decide side on it. The aim of this new structure is to make the whole administrative process more agile and efficient. We thank Nayara Tardo for that report. In the early hours of the morning, the lower house of Congress in Argentina passed a key law to reboot the economy. The debate began on Thursday afternoon and ended 15 hours later with 134 34 votes in favor and 110 against. The law uh, on social solidarity and the reactivation of production introduces an economic emergency to overcome the crisis left by the neoliberal policies of former President Mauricio Macri. The new government says it needs to give help to those who are suffering most from poverty. While some far-left lawmakers said the law was mainly aimed at dealing with the IMF. The emergency is an exceptional situation, which we didn't generate, but which we need to address urgently because we are not just talking about economic data. We are talking about people. Argentines who are suffering and are waiting for the state to find a solution. Minister Guzman said that this law is needed to negotiate with the International Monetary Fund. Article 2, paragraph A says that all of this is to guarantee the sustainability of the public debt. That's to say that this is to pay the International Monetary Fund. Our correspondent in Buenos Aires, Edgardo Esteban, explains the importance of this law. So this law was finally passed after an exhaustive debate that went right through the night and produced a number of concessions and new agreements. The law on social solidarity and the reactivation of production aims to put an end to the dreadful crisis in which the previous government of Mauricio Macri left the country, which has really hurt the most vulnerable sectors of society. The lawmakers went through the articles of the law one by one, and President Alberto Fernandez himself followed the whole process. He was in touch with the Speaker of the House and made several suggestions for modifications, including some concessions to small businesses and family farmers. The emergency law will be in force until the end of December next year, and then the government could seek to extend it. 
Attention now shifts to the Senate, which has to debate the bill and finally pass it into law. That debate is starting this afternoon and will also probably go into the night. This will be the first session of Congress presided over by the new Vice President, Cristina Fernandez. We expect the bill to be approved by the Senate as well, and once it's published in the official Gazette, the economic emergency will come into effect, with all these measures directed at tackling the situation of hunger and economic crisis in Argentina. The law will also be an important instrument for negotiating with the IMF on the huge $57 billion bailout loan agreed by the previous government. That was Edgardo Esteban in Argentina. Prosecutors in Rio de Janeiro have accused Senator Flavio Bolsonaro, the son of Brazil's president, of laundering over half a million dollars. The charges come as another blow to the popularity of President Jair Bolsonaro. His eldest son is accused of demanding that employees appointed by his office hand back part of their salaries. This money was then funneled through an upmarket chocolate store partly owned by the senator. Flavio Bolsonaro says the accusations are false. There is an absurd persecution in Rio de Janeiro against me because they want to hit me to try to hit the president. Just one message for you, you won't succeed because we haven't done anything wrong and sooner or later it's all going to be obviously proven. In Sao Paulo, Brian Muir explains the significance of this case. On Wednesday, Rio de Janeiro police raided the apartments of 13 former employees of Senator Flavio Bolsonaro, who's the son of Brazilian far-right President Jair Bolsonaro. According to the police, between 2007 and 2018, when Flavio Bolsonaro was a state congressman for Rio de Janeiro, he maintained a large ghost payroll of employees who never came to work, many of whom lived in other cities and kicked back large portions of their salaries every month to his aide, Fabricio Queiroz. Now among these ghost employees, there are 10 relatives of his through his mother's side of the family who live in the city of Hezende and don't show any signs of ever going into the state legislature in Rio de Janeiro to work. And another troubling thing is two of the employees, uh, former employees on this list, are the wife and mother-in-law of Adriano Nobrega, who is the leader, the alleged leader of the Escritorio do Crime paramilitary militia and death squad that's been implicated in the assassination of former Rio de Janeiro city councilwoman Marielle Franco. Now, according to the police, over the course of several years, Fabricio Queiroz, the aide to, to Flavio Bolsonaro, received over 400 deposits into his bank account from these so-called employees who didn't live in the city of Rio de Janeiro. And receiving the money, he would then launder it through uh, real estate transactions and a lot of transactions in this chocolate shop, which recorded, for example, on one day, 21,000 reais of purchases in chocolate. Another disturbing thing is that Quiroz made a deposit of over 25,000 reais to the wife of current President Jair Bolsonaro. So the, the police are closing their fence around the Bolsonaro family. The government of Panama has declared December 20th as a national day of mourning in observance of the 30-year anniversary of the United States military invasion. The U.S. operation ordered by President George Bush in the name of a just cause trampled upon the sovereignty of Panama to assure full U.S. control of the Panama Canal. According to official figures, 300 Panamanian soldiers and 214 civilians were killed during the operation. However, independent organizations say the number of deaths was beyond the thousands. Coming up after the break, a former Rwandan official is found guilty of genocide. Stay with us. Welcome back. Ethiopia has launched its first satellite into space. The satellite was developed by Chinese and Ethiopian scientists with financial aid from the Chinese government. It will be used to transmit environmental and weather data to aid agricultural development in the Horn of Africa. The launch makes Ethiopia the 11th African country to have a satellite into space. Egypt was the first in 1998. Satellite ETRSS-1, which is currently launching from China, will be a foundation for our historic journey to prosperity. 
I have here around 20 Ethiopians have participated in the launching of the satellite, 15 men and 5 women. In the near future, I believe Ethiopians will do better in the space program. That's my hope. An ex-Rwandan official has been found guilty of genocide in a Belgium court. 71-year-old Fabien Neretzi faces a life sentence for his role in the 1994 massacre in his country. He was also found guilty of committing nine war crimes in Rwanda under, under Belgium's Code of Universal Jurisdiction for the most serious offenses. Neretzi is the first person to be convicted. All of these elements establish that the accused committed the crime of genocide in Rwanda between 6 April 1994 and 14 July 1994 in the prefectures of Kijali, Rujengeri and Hitarama. It's a remarkably motivated judgment, and it is a judgment that will have an impact not only in Belgium, but also worldwide. It is in fact a judgment that is a first in Belgium, since it is the first time that there has been a conviction for acts of genocide. I think that really it is a judgment that is part of our history and the history of humanity. The opposition leader in Guyana, Bharat Jagdio, has warned that if his party returns to government, it will exclude the company, which strikes a deal with the current administration to buy the country's first oil. Jack Dio says the caretaker government does not have the power to make those decisions. Any company that is that ties up an arrangement now, we have made a decision that when we go to open public tender for the sale of our crew, that's the only way you can go open public tender. Anyone can bid not selective company, that the company that ties up the arrangement with them now shall be excluded from any op official when the open public tender is done. That is our position now, because they're knowingly entering into a contract with a government that has its powers reduced and that is, is known for its finality. That shouldn't be tying up any such arrangements before the elections. Trinidad and Tobago's government intends to proclaim the Dangerous Drugs Amendment Bill 2019 on Monday. The bill seeks to decriminalize the possession of a maximum of 30 grams of cannabis and makes other provisions for the use of the previously prohibited drug. What we discussed and what we approved was the proclamation of what was passed in the parliament, that now opens the door for a lot of those things to happen. Jamaica's National Solid Waste Management Authority will introduce sexual harassment and international whistleblower policies to clear up its image earlier next year. Four years ago, the NSWMA was branded one of the most corrupt state entities. We also have We've worked on our, our policies internally and we're, we're now putting in place a whistleblower policy which we're hoping to effect early in 2020 um, so that our employees can call an independent um, place and report anything that they think is, is wrong within the organization. And secondly, we're putting in place a sexual harassment policy which is in train in Peru, members of various collectives and citizens have gathered outside of McDonald's in the Miraflores neighborhood of Lima, where two young workers died after being electrocuted. One of the protesters said that the cause of the death of these two young men was the neoliberal economic model in the country. Various protesters held placards reading McDeath and they are not workers but victims of exploitation. Carlos Gabriel Edgardo Campos and Alexandra Antonella Porras both worked for McDonald's and passed away last Sunday after receiving an electric shock while cleaning the kitchen. 19 years ago, the General Assembly of the United Nations declared December 18th the International Day of the Migrant. It is still a sensitive issue for countries like Mexico. Thousands of migrants, most of them from Central America, will spend the holidays at the northern border of Mexico. They are waiting for a response to their request for asylum from the United States authorities. 
Being away from the family is hard for everyone. I have always lived with them, and now I am alone in these holidays. It's the first time that I will be spending this time alone. Civil society or 37,000 people have filed asylum. And have been approved. They all have hope, but the truth is that there are few successful cases that move forward. We try to give advice to make them think twice about what they are doing, because there is little hope of getting to the other side. It's a strict policy. The rules for traveling through Mexico have also been made stiffer. Last May, the government was forced to apply measures to restrain migration after the White House threatened to, after the White House threatened to slap tariffs on Mexican goods. About 12,000 members of the National Guard were deployed to Mexico's southern border. As a result of the strategy, which includes production programs in Central American countries, the flow of migrants has fallen by 70 percent, according to official figures. Mexico, for a long time, at least three decades, has been a country with a high number of migrants in transit. We calculate that in the last few years, almost 400,000 people have crossed the country. What has happened in the last year and a half is that it has become much more visible because of the caravans and the way the government has portrayed it. In addition to receiving those who flee from poverty and violence in countries like Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala, Mexico has also received Mexicans like Ever Seron, who after 20 years of living in the United States was deported. That day I was with my children and it was very hard to see the migration service entering my house because they didn't ask, they came in with a gun. Actions like those he describes have become more frequent under the Trump administration, which in nine months has sent back to Mexico more than 176,000 people, while the president still insists on building a wall. Coming up after the break, a new prime minister has been appointed in Lebanon. Stay with us. Welcome back. MPs have voted in support of Boris Johnson's Brexit deal in the United Kingdom's House of Commons. This is not unexpected as Johnson won a large majority in the parliament after the December 13th election. Still, this is the first step towards fulfilling his election pledge to deliver Britain's departure from the European Union by January 31st. Lawmakers voted 358 to 234 to pass the second reading of the legislation. It's been more than three years since Britain voted voted to exit the EU in a referendum in 2016. The eyes to the right were 358, the nose to the left were 234, so the eyes have it, the eyes have it. Yeah. Yeah. The bill ensures that the implementation period must end on the 31st of December next year with no possibility of an extension, and it paves the way for a new agreement on our future relationship with our European neighbours based on an ambitious free trade agreement, with no alignment no, I went, with no alignment on EU rules, but instead control of our own laws. Under the Conservatives, this deal will be used as a battering ram to drive us down the path of yet more deregulation and towards a toxic deal with Donald Trump. And that will sell out our National Health Service and push up the price of medicines to benefit U.S. drug corporations. Democratic candidates in the U.S. slammed Donald Trump one day after his impeachment, saying he's a corrupt president who deserves to be removed. Ahead of the party's televised debate, the seven candidates still in the running criticized Trump, who has been impeached for abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Senator Bernie Sanders blasted Trump as running the most corrupt administration in the modern history of this country. We have a president who is a pathological liar. <clears throat> we have a president who is running the most corrupt administration in the modern history of this country. And we have a president who is a fraud, 
because during his campaign, he told working people one thing, and he ended up doing something else. It was a constitutional necessity for the House to act as it did. And, uh, you know, uh, Trump's response to suggest that only half of the American people want to see him thrown out of office now, I find is dumbing down the presidency beyond what I even thought he would do. China's President Xi Jinping has praised Macau for its patriotism as, as the special administrative region celebrated 20 years since being liberated from Portuguese rule. Xi presided over the inauguration of a new leader for a city he described as a shining chapter of its one country, two systems model. Ho Yat Seng, a former member of China's top lawmaking body, became Macau's new chief executive after being the only candidate for the post. Meanwhile, Xi warned for foreign countries against interfering in China's affairs. The will of the Chinese government and Chinese people to defend our national sovereignty, security and development interests are as firm as rocks. We will definitely not allow any foreign forces to interfere Hong Kong and Macau affairs. A new prime minister has been appointed in Lebanon following parliamentary consultations. President Michel Aoun appointed professor and independent politician Hassan Diab for the post. The Shiat Hezbollah party offered its support for this decision. Diab said he would work hard to form a government as soon as possible by listening to all political sectors in the country. He promised to try to solve the causes of the discontent that has seen thousands take to the streets in recent weeks. Various organizations in El Salvador that took part in the COP25 summit have defined it as another failure, another missed opportunity. So they say they will continue to promote social programs that protect the environment. Silvia Gomez breeds black scallops in the mangroves of San Juan, in the west of El Salvador. She visits her nursery regularly since it's her only source of income. She has become a protector of the coastal fauna. Not for us, but for the future generations, so that they are able to know about the shells, so that they get to know crabs, blue crabs, so that the fauna be preserved and not to continue to deteriorate. Silvia is one of the beneficiaries of programs promoted by the Salvadorian Ecologic Unit that trains residents in order to combat climate change. I wasn't aware of how the shells were processed and how they were taken care of. Well, today I know how to take care of them and how not to overexploit them. And also how to raise awareness for people to see that instead of destroying the fauna, they should conserve and take care of it. Indigenous organizations, churches and environmentalists described the recently ended COP25 summit as another failure and one less opportunity. They say that the world has been able to see the lack of interest of the industrialized countries on the climate emergency. This summit is an absolute failure, especially for the less fortunate countries. These countries are in a state of vulnerability, in spite of the fact that they are the least responsible for the climate crisis. Women Against Climate Change is an example of a way to protect the environment. These women conduct cleaning and reforestation campaigns. The society's participation is the goal of the social movements. The real change are local, and we as indigenous people have always said that. If you want to change the world, change your perspective, change your vision, and the world will change with you. Global warming and climate change are concepts that the population now handles with great concern, since their communities are the ones that are more vulnerable to environmental change. And finally, the Brazilian Italo Ferreira has won the World Surfing Championship. Ferreira took the crown at the World Surf League Tour in Hawaii. He beat his fellow Brazilian and former world champion, Gabriel Medina. We leave you with one of his extraordinary rides. Wanted that lip section to ramp him up. Will he get an opportunity here? Big full rotation. <laughs> And with that, we've come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. And also join us on social media. We are on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. For Telesur English, I am Estefania Bravo. Until next time.